Hello and a very warm welcome to this Bitwig practice session. In this episode I talk about kick trick recycling. That's something where you have to separate the kick from the base really dramatically. And there are nice ways and nice techniques or workflows to do that. And I show you my way how I do that. But let's get started. Okay, I'm starting a new track and I create a, a kick or an e-kick. So I double click on the arranger here and double click on the clip itself and create a four to the floor rhythm like that. And at the end I put some additional hits and this sounds like that. Maybe with a loop toggle on. And maybe I want to use a um, hard clipper for that. Maybe like this. And I have a, a Base and this base is playing maybe like a G but on the second eighth note. Like this. So I noticed I didn't use a original polyself, so I load the original polyself in here. Maybe like that. Okay. This is default. This is the this is the e kick. Okay, so now I look at the oscilloscope and load in my polysynth bath in here. Open in the it in the big view and look at it. Maybe I delete the two additional hits on here to have a clearer view on it. And play it again. Okay, and here you can see this is the bass drum or kick drum. This is the bass and the kick drum is bleeding in the bass and the bass is bleeding in the kick drum. That's not a good uh, situation. So what I can do right now in the beginning because I'm starting arranging um, this track. Um, I look into the um, polysynth and there's still a release there. So maybe this solves this problem. Not really, there's still in the transient something. So I could go in here, select all nodes and maybe shorten that at the end on a 128th. And now look at the oscilloscope again. Okay, and the bass ends here. So that's good. We are good with the bass, but still the kick drum is bleeding completely into the bass, into the bass, yes, and uh, to the next kick drum. So this is not a good situation. So I want this sound from the kick drum. I like this with this body in there. This is a nice thing. So now I could. Um, try to use a transient control and maybe sh short down the kick but this changes dramatically the sound there's not the same kick drum anymore like this okay so transient control is not a solution so go on here and 
bounces in a new uh, track with 32-bit float. Sometimes it needs 32-bit float. And here I have now four kick drums, but I only need one and one is one quarter long. So I go on here. This is my quarter kick drum. And this kick drum should be only one eighth long, like until here. So what I do now, I take the gain and put one dot on the third sixteenth. And here is the end of the eighth note. And I pull down the whole gain to zero. Hold down the Alt key and make, maybe try if this helps something. So I loop here this, this clip, mute this one. I think this sounds good. And to compare it, those tracks, this is the original. And let's see what the oscilloscope is doing. So let's take the polysynth base here again. And we need this one. Okay, I need to freeze it. Okay, that you see the kick drum is separated from the bass and the bass is separate from the, from the kick drum. Okay, take back this whole loop, put it back to the eighth note and bounce it in place directly in here. So now I have a sample with an eighth note kick and on my kick, um, yeah, I still have my kick. So now I could uh, do like uh, putting these notes all over my new track and build everything from scratch on here like this. But remember, this is maybe a 5, 6, 8, 10, 15 minutes track. So this could be, could be very exhausting. So I add here on the track of the e-kick, I add an instrument selector like this, this one, and this instrument selector is called kick selector with a K. <laughs> and I put the e-kick in here. So the whole processing of the e-kick is in the instrument selector. And um, I reuse all these MIDI notes and insert here a sampler. And in this sampler, I put in this eight note kick sample. Then I deactivate the key mapping, um, activate the shot mode, and now I have to see if the volume is the same. So let's mute this one. This is the original one. It's not the same. Maybe pull down the velocity. Seems to be the same. This is red, this is okay. So now I can reuse all the media notes here. I can delete here the audio track. And if I have a, um, a heavy processing chain in here, I can just deactivate this whole processing chain and it's only playing the sample. And if I want to change the kick afterwards, afterwards on sound or sound design, or I'm not happy with it and want to do some tweaking or something, I just um, take one kick in here, bounce into a new track, then do all my stuff to separate it from the bass and put it back in the sampler. And I have my kick for the whole track again. 
and still have the whole deactivate um, the whole processing chain in here that I may have to reuse again because I was not satisfied with the newly created cake, for example. And you can uh, you could uh, start uh, creating your uh, multi-instrument kick instrument or something with the best uh, kicks from the 70s 80s and 90s I don't know <laughs> everything you want but this is a very um, practical way to um, synthesize the kick drum and um, do the final cut with the uh, audio editor to have really everything in place and to have the full control over everything so that's all. I hope you liked it. Uh, maybe you give me a comment. Um, maybe uh, you uh, tell me how you do that normally and maybe there's a better way for that. Um, please let me know. Please let the others know as well. Uh, maybe some other ideas or so. Just don't be shy and comment. And I hope I see you in the next video again. So stay healthy. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.